Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at the SC Designs F16 that was recently released. It's published by Just Flight and is available on their website for 35 bucks at this point. And it will probably eventually be available on places like Sim Market. It is version 0.2.0. I expect that it'll be version 1 by the time it hits the other marketplaces, though I'm not sure. But that has been the pattern with the DC Designs fighters. I'm not sure what the difference between SC Designs and DC Designs is. Uh, I guess they are different, but they sound a lot the same. Anyway, but this is the F-16. We have three versions, F-16C, D, and I. And I'm going to test it out around Frankfurt. We can take a look at the liveries. Uh, whoop. Liveries. Uh, we've got the Thunderbirds livery, always very important. We've got a Tiger livery there. Uh, aggressor, always nice. And I mean, uh, I wasn't expecting a NASA livery, but uh, they have 16. I don't know if they have a F-16, maybe. But at least we have the Thunderbirds one. And for the D version with the two seats, we only have two liveries for that. And then finally for the Israeli version, uh, we have two versions for that, two liveries. And uh, that's an interesting top there. So it's a different model. And yeah, so I suppose that's extra fuel. I mean, we've got the conformal tanks as well. The conformal tanks, thankfully, you can just add. I'll go with the F-15C, uh, sorry, F-16C. Um, and I've already tried this one out. I'll just go with this one. And the way you add the conformal tanks is actually to center too. We'll see that outside. I'll uh, top it off here and we'll fly around Frankfurt because it is a photo photogrammetry city and so it'll be a good test of, you know, frame rates and such, uh, at least on my system. Uh, so, all right, you can add weapons here. Uh, those, if it ever gets to the marketplace, that wouldn't be possible. So it's from the other vendors. The marketplace doesn't allow weapons to be added to. Of course, they're not functional weapons anyway. But even the depiction of weapons is not possible on the marketplace. And all you have to do to add the weapons is to type in the correct number for the mass. So 190 would get the Sidewinders and 350 will get the MRAMs. Uh, we'll do a clean for now and then outside I'll show that. So I'll probably come up. Uh, yes, I have the DCS World F-16 already. I have flown it, I enjoy it. This is not a study sim F-16. This is a fly around the world and enjoy it F-16. Uh, that may not be worth 35 bucks for everybody. So, I mean, that is up to you. And we'll take a look at the cockpit and such. But yes, it, it doesn't have study sim style stuff. It is meant to be easy to jump into and fly. And it doesn't have failure modeling. So, I mean, normally when I pay for a plane, I would like failure modeling, uh, you know, sophisticated failure modeling. And a sophisticated cockpit, that's another thing I look for. Uh, this has a decent cockpit, but the failure modeling, of course, because it's not a study sim plane and is explicitly billed as not a study sim plane, uh, is not quite there. So, taking a look at the cockpit, I should have been in with track IR, I always forget that. Uh, you can see the displays. Uh, I noticed on my initial test flight that uh, these buttons essentially, uh, some of them do useful things like red or radar, but it doesn't really show it, I don't know. Uh, but the, a lot of the autopilot functionality is on this one. See arm auto throttle uh, and you know approach mode and back course mode. I don't know if it works. I probably wouldn't use the autopilot with this plane. And it's a little bit sad because on this display in particular, I usually like to have engine and fuel info, uh, but I don't see a way of getting that. I'll have to take a look at the manual in greater detail to see if there is any way of doing that. Uh, unfortunately, our fuel stuff is sort of behind the joystick and the stick doesn't have one of those, oh, uh, no, the smoke, not yoke. <laughs> Uh, doesn't have a good way of getting rid of it. Uh, there's also a texture issue right there, if you can see right at the center of our camera. I know I have the cursor off. Um, yeah, there's some weathering on the stick. Uh, that's okay, but there's a texture issue right there. Otherwise, there's uh, good textures, um, but there are also minor issues, like uh, this sort of a jagged edge right there. And right there too. So yeah, 
but I'll just show it to you. The seat ain't great, but hopefully you won't be. Then again, looking back at the wings is always a nice thing to do, but anyway, the buckles are as you see them. And let's take a look outside. Well, this is the Tiger version. Uh, it, it didn't really give a sense of the livery very well in the thumbnail, but all right, well, here we are. Um, it's a little bit more garish than I was expecting. So, again, to uh, set the fuel, if you want to get rid of the conformal tanks, you see they just disappear when you turn center two off. And so that's the fuel in the conformal tanks. And similarly, if you wanted to get rid of the external tanks, you can do that. I don't know if there's a jettison switch inside yet. I'm going to try and take off with a full fuel load, so all the bits, including the conformal tanks, really weigh it down. Oh, that didn't actually turn these up. Hmm. Oh, I think it changed the number, but didn't change the slider. Well, welcome to Flight Sim and all the weird stuff that's happening. Uh, speaking of weird stuff, of course, we're still not able to go safely above 44,000 feet. So that's a drawback of flying planes like this. Uh, the F-16 doesn't have that high a service ceiling, but it's still going to limit it. Okay, so here we go. This is how it sounds like throttling up. And I've got afterburner on. Now it is fly-by-wire, so it's going to auto-trim. And also auto-flap. Okay, I'm taking it out of afterburner, but we should see what the afterburner effect is like around here. Right now it's only doing that. It doesn't seem to have much of a flame. It's sort of a mild discoloration in the back there. But not much more than that. The texture at least doesn't look as plastic as some F-16s I've seen. It's not a bad look. Going at 558, 560 knots down here. Fairly smooth to fly. Much as you would expect. Well, it's not the most scenic day here in Frankfurt. We're more or less staying below Mach 1 without the afterburner. Well, you should be getting an accurate sense of the frames as I skim these trees here. Ah, there are the buildings. There's our photogrammetry. Okay, let's see how it deals with this stuff. It's still under Mach 1. I'll stay above the fray, if you will. Well, as usual, the photogrammetry isn't keeping up with it, but it isn't making the plane intolerable to fly. It's basically reducing the fidelity of the photogrammetry in order to accommodate. Okay, well, let's go higher up. So, well, actually, let's see if we can break the sound barrier and level flight down below, shall we? So you can see the Mach number there. I'm going past Mach 0.7. Well, we are past Mach 1. Outside, it's not indicating any red line over there. Well, clear skies away from the city. We're past an indicated airspeed of 800 knots. That's usually a pretty high number and close to a breaking point. Guzzling fuel like crazy, though. 
Mach 1.3. Now they've got the sort of somewhat of the Mach effect going on here in that there's silence on this side and then sort of a cone where you can finally hear the sound. But it doesn't have the crack that the F-18 had. So Mach 1.33, let me just go inverted for a bit. So inverted at Mach 1.34, the fly-by-wire makes it very easy. I think Mach 1.35 will be it down here. Okay, well, outside loop. Let's see what kind of negative G's it can deal with. Negative 2.7. I'm pushing down as hard as I can. Okay, we're pointed straight up. We're not going to be able to hold this for very long. Okay, that's probably as much as we want to do with that. Because, remember, there is that issue at 44,000 feet. And also, our airspeed was going dangerously low. But yeah, uh, it's got a bit of a wiggle here as it's stalled out, basically. Look at the angle of attack there. So we need to recover a bit. Not bad, though. Okay, how much fuel have we used here? Uh, surprisingly little, if that's right. It's draining from external two. Oh, uh... Well, we only have 10 gallons in external one. Did we drop a tank, or is it just not counting? Though? It's got lots of range, considering we've been on full afterburner for a while now. And that's similar to DC Designs planes. We're past Mach 1 again after making that climb, and I'll try and go up a little bit. Of course, they don't have as much range as they used to. Again, I'm bemoaning the inability to get past 44,000 feet. And uh, it, it can get a little bit beyond 44,000 feet, it's just wobbly and kills the engine somewhat. So, yeah, I've tested it out with this one, it has the same problem as the F-14, F-15, F-18, F-104, they all have that issue. It's a sim-wide issue. I don't know how they manage this, but... But yeah, being unable to get higher than 44,000 feet really hurts the range of everything, and especially the F-104. The F-104 in particular is really hurt by that. And that's because it's actually doing the fuel consumption on the afterburner pretty severely and probably right. And therefore you need to be pretty high up to beyond the afterburner. Okay, well, I'll level out around here-ish. And I'm not particular about the altitude right now, except that we shouldn't go too high. I just want to see what Mach number we hit in the thinner atmosphere. Down below we were at 1.35, which is pretty high. Which is pretty high. I don't know why the loading of the photo scenery seems so patchy these days. In other words, why does it seem to be two versions of the photo scenery? I didn't really notice that in prior versions much or at all. You know, there's some squares here that are one version of photo scenery, and then there, there's the other version, and it keeps alternating, and I hate that. Why? Why is that happening? Uh, we're at Mach 1.4 now. Uh, there's a lot of photo scenery not keeping up kind of things going on, and that feels like it's this version's fault. Where are we? We are here. Headed south towards Switzerland. Mach 1.6 right now. I think I'll just land it in Geneva. That seems like a good flight. Yeah, uh, please advise if you have any clue about how to stop this sort of thing from happening. I do intend to fly high and fast frequently and would like it to look right. Frame rates don't seem to be a problem right now. 
and it's not maxing out CPU or GPU or anything like that either. So the airspeed is not out of the ballpark, except that we do still have the drop tanks, so... Oh, it actually let go of the wing ones. I didn't do that. So maybe it automatically dumps the wing ones when they're done. Oh, yeah, it, it really, when, when I pull up on the stick right now, it really jerks up. Mach 1.7 seems to be what we get. Let's take a look at what a fuel situation looks like right now. The external 2 has 1%. I think it's actually ticking down the fuel. Yeah, it's ticking down the fuel a bit. It hasn't updated these sliders is our problem. That's why I'm getting so confused. Um, the fuel is diminishing, but it's not changing the slider at all. It's not updating the sliders. But out here, we can see 47% fuel. Still a lot. Of course, we are car we were carrying all external fuel tanks and the conformal tanks, so it does have, in real life, a substantial range like that, even with the afterburner. Okay, well, Mach 1.7 was the fastest I got to, and we're oh, we're getting close to that boundary. Well, I'll show you what happens at 44,000 feet if you don't know already. We're still approaching Geneva, that's LSGG. Okay, here look at 550 knots indicated there. And then suddenly it's down to 320, 330 and wobbles like this. And then it does that sort of nonsense, look at that. I'm not super concerned at all, but... This is just what happens at this altitude, and that's why we can't get beyond it. Now, again, the service ceiling for the F-16 is not that high. But it is higher than this. Wikipedia says 45,000 feet, but it's definitely higher than 45,000 feet. So anyway, strange things... But I'll take it out after burner now and we'll try to land at Geneva. It's not doing a particularly good job of rendering the snow on Lake Geneva or ice, I suppose. Okay, let's go down. Let's just go down. Oh, we haven't tested the air brake yet. Well, we don't need to do that when our airspeed is only 200. But once we get below 44,000 feet, that'll change to where it's supposed to be. There we go. Let's do a deep dive, if you will. There's some stripiness on the textures we've got below us on the mountains there. I don't know, Bing Maps needs to shape up. Okay, let's test out the air brake. It's uh, just the ones by the engine here. Doing fine. Whoa. Okay, okay. There seems to be a certain segment of it that's thawed though. Right in front of us seems to be blue, or is that gonna turn white as well? I don't know. It's all so weird. But yeah, seems thawed. Blockiness is super irritating though. I'm not even going that... Well, okay, I'm going at 500 knots. It's got to say, I wasn't going that fast. Well, I mean... I've gone faster. Actually, the broken ice is a good... A nice, a nice touch. I like this. So, that's a positive. Now, in DCS, the F-16 can be a pain to land sometimes. Well, I doubt it's going to be that bad here, but we'll see. It seemed pretty sure on its feet during takeoff. Okay, uh, well, just flying over the runway first. A lot of apron. Oh, it uh, groaned a little bit about me turning it. So it's got some, some additional sound effects as far as when it's unhappy and might stall. Okay, parallel to the airfield. Let's take a look at the 
gear extension animation. So gear down. Oh, oh. That wheel clipped that door, didn't it? Oh, 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 that makes me sad. I've done animations in Blender. I've taken pains to avoid that sort of thing before. Oh, my. Well, that's a bit of a shame. I mean, that is a difficult one, but still. I'm not trying for a perfect landing here. I'm trying for a potentially gear-breaking landing kind of thing. Just sort of borderline what we might be able to get away with. Uh, okay, rudder is really wiggly. Oh, maybe I, I did it too softly. Shoot. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, it's a little bit jittery here, but it's not too bad. I've definitely had that worse. Oh, oh, okay, we can't make that turn. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it does have a tiny wheelbase. It's got tiny wheelbase problems, so that's fine. So, all right, some pluses and minuses from this uh, F-16. I always like the way that uh, DC Designs and SC Designs have done the tanks and potential weapons. Oh, I didn't actually show the weapons. Once I park, I'll show. So this deal, let's get Sidewinders. Did we get a Sidewinder? Oh, there we go. But there you have it. The SC Designs F-16 in version 0 0.2.0. So partly I have been pointing things out because I expect them to be fixed by version 1.0. So I'm sure there will be feedback and they will take that into consideration and make improvements. Uh, I noted that from other just light published planes. So we will see how it all goes. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.